Okay, we've got a few more people joining us. Uh, thanks so much, everyone. Um, if you can hear my voice, uh, I am muting all lines just to cut back on some background noise. People are calling in from different locations. Uh, if you can, uh, please chat me any questions that you might have in the lower left-hand chat box. And it is now 12.58. I'm going to get started. Um, good afternoon, everyone. This is Dahlia Coleman uh, from Forefront. I'm the Vice President of Strategy and Policy here. Uh, welcome to our webinar, 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 The Power of Peer-to-Peer -peer Fundraising. We are thrilled to have you. Um, before we dive into today's content, I just have a few housekeeping notes. Everyone's phone lines, as stated before, are muted to keep background noise to a minimum. We do welcome your questions, however. Uh, please take a minute to locate your chat box. Mine is at the lower left-hand corner of my screen. Yours may be too. Please type any questions you have there, and we will address them as we go. We are recording this presentation. You will get a version of this deck, and it will be available on the webinars page of I'llGive.com. That's especially useful if you want to share this awesome webinar and pass the word along to coworkers as well as other stakeholders. We hope you enjoy today's webinar, and we hope you'll join us for more learning opportunities. You can see what's coming up on our website at myforefront.org. And with that, I will throw it on over to Vanessa from our awesome partners at GiveGab, who will share with us how to launch a successful peer-to-peer -peer campaign for I'll Give community. Thanks, Delia. Um, thank you for attending this webinar. Um, we find this one particularly important because uh, those who do utilize peer-to-peer -peer fundraising really do better, and um, the, our data has shown that. So um, we're really excited for you to be engaged and leverage peer-to-peer -peer fundraising for I'll Give community coming up. Um, I'm also joined today by Nicole. She is one of our customer success reps, and I'm sure you'll see her beautiful face in that little chat bubble uh, following you around on the I'll Give uh, community website. Um, and we will also post this to the I'll Give uh, webinar page as well. So the recording will be there to access as well as uh, the Forefront website. And again, um, as Delia noted, uh, feel free to ask those questions. Uh, we will reserve time at the end to take those. All right, so let's kick it off. Um, so today's agenda, we're going to go over what peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is, um, and then what are the benefits to it. Uh, here at GiveGab, we've done a number of different uh, giving days. So what are those benefits that do we see, um, and really what's in it for you as an organization? And then how do you identify those potential peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers? And we don't want to just go ask Joe Schmo off the, the road to, to be a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser for us. So what are the steps in going about to identify who those people are? And then how do we turn our supporters into fundraisers? So how do we leverage peer-to-peer -peer fundraising as another way of stewarding uh, our donors and building those um, symbiotic relationships with them? And at the end, we will, uh, again, have time for questions, so please ask any and all questions there. Um, if something does come to you after the webinar is over, again, please feel free to reach out to our customer success team, and they'll be happy to field any questions you have afterwards. All right, well, let's get started. All right, so who, uh, what is a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser? So uh, by definition, a supporter a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser is a supporter who rallies behind your cause to fundraise on your behalf. So these are people who will go out into the community um, on your behalf to spread your mission and also let others know why they connect to your mission and why they should too. Um, on GiveGap, they do get to create a personal fundraising page. Um, their, the fundraising page does pull in your branding, um, so it will look very similar to yours, but it does give them the opportunity to add some context around why they're fundraising on your behalf. And again, it creates that opportunity to make a connection with a, a prospective donor and really convey what their connection is to your organization and why they believe so, uh, so much in you. 
Um, they're also able to share their fundraising page to their network, um, which will expand huge. Um, so similar to your profile, in the, on the right side of your Giving Day profile, you have that special link that we encourage you to share out um, that will take donors directly to your profile. Um, so the peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers have the same thing. Um, they'll have their own personalized link to share out on their social media. Um, so that makes it very easy for prospective donors to come and support their fundraising efforts. Um, and these people are very passionate about your cause. Um, and they become another voice for you to leverage to get the word out about what you do and what your mission is for I'll Give community. Um, I, I was able to participate in a, um, a half marathon, a Lake Effect half marathon a few years ago. And as I went through the registration process, I found an organization to fundraise on behalf of. So here I was already doing a, participating in an event and I was able to research this uh, awesome uh, nonprofit that I had a personal connection to. Um, and I was able to leverage my, uh, my support, my friends and families to support this cause that I was personally connected to as well. So it was a wonderful way for this, it was based in Syracuse, which is about an hour north of us, but it spread the word throughout the Ithaca region, which is a great way to keep spreading their network and build their presence even further beyond their immediate community. So finding those peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers is very influential and very, um, effective in spreading your reach throughout, not just your immediate area, but just throughout uh, the state of Illinois. Um, so spreading that, spreading your reach and your network um, has great benefits. Um, so we, we did some analysis on our data from a few of our Giving Tuesday clients, um, I'll give being one of them. Um, and we found that an average of four new donors were acquired per peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. So if you have five new five peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers raising on your behalf, that could be almost 20 new donors for your organization. Um, so that's a huge impact, especially if your goal for the day is just to network and to get those new donors on board. Um, and then, again, that same data set, we found that those organizations who leveraged peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers raised three times more than those who didn't. Um, that's huge. And again, that's just that's leveraging that extra network and the extra support um, that you already have for your organization. Um, it also increased the number of donations. So again, you're utilizing other uh, networks. So other people are going to see that you are participating in I'll Give community and what your mission is and making that connection. So we do find that the vast majority, uh, about 80% of um, organizations who participate in our giving days do acquire new donors. Again, if you use these peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, that percentage is even higher. Um, and again, this is, this is also a great uh, stewarding tool. So um, you can engage your top supporters by inviting them to be champions um, to support your organization. So um, right in the platform, we make this very easy to do, and Nicole's gonna walk us through that in a few minutes. Um, but asking, asking those to be around, uh, that already have supported you to continue to spread the word and support you in a different way other than in a monetary fashion is a great way to build that relationship and make them feel like they're really an integral part of their of your organization because they are they they will make a big impact for you on May 30th. We also have free tools and templates um, in order to help you collaborate with your fundraisers and your fundraisers fundraise on your behalf. Um, so check those out. They're right in the nonprofit toolkit that we've remodeled for this giving day. Um, so we have a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising toolkit, and then within that toolkit, there is a, li a link uh, to share out to your fundraisers that will give them step-by-step -step instructions on how they can be uh, very effective um, in their fundraising efforts. So who are your potential champions? Um, so again, we don't want to just ask anybody to fundraise on our behalf. Um, a great place is to start with your board members. Um, uh, going back to that, that uh, the, the data that we got from um, the Giving Tuesday clients, um, engaged board members 
make a profound impact on the success on a given day. Um, so asking your your uh, board members to even just uh, fundraise even a small amount on the day um, will help spread the word and show their support for your organization. Um, other uh, other groups that you could tap into would be your volunteers, um, your dedicated supporters, so those who have already donated, um, which could be your lower capacity donors or your major donors. Um, we don't really necessarily recommend that you tap into prospects um, because you're still cultivating that relationship, um, but tapping into those donors that have already uh, donated to you is a great place to start. Also, uh, staff members. You work for this organization. You dedicate your time there. So um, you're clearly already very passionate about what your organization does and you believe in it. So showing that through peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is another great way to help build those connections and those, that relationship to your community. And also your friends and family. Um, in my personal example, my friends and my family uh, supported me and we ended up raising $5,000 for, uh, for the, the fundraiser that I did um, because they could see why I was so passionate about it. They knew my history and so they, were, they wanted to support that. So other, people's re other people reaped that benefit. So again, uh, friends and family are a great way, way to tap into that extra support. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Nicole to walk through um, how you can actually go ahead and recruit these peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. Thanks, Vanessa. <clears throat> so first, you're going to want to go to your I'll Give community dashboard, um, and that's right on GiveGab. And you're going to go to the last tab of your dashboard, and that's your Add Fundraisers tab. Um, so once you do that to recruit your fundraiser, you're just going to want to click that Add Fundraisers button. And then from there, you're going to be prompted to add in just a little bit of information about them, so just their first name, last name, and email address. And you can either recruit these fundraisers one at a time and send them each a personalized message, or you can recruit multiple at a time and kind of send more of a mass email. And just click that Add New Fundraiser button to add multiple at a time. And then you're just going to want to click Next. From there, you compose this message that will go right to your fundraisers um, and, you know, just talk about why you're recruiting them um, and why, you know, they should be fundraising on your behalf. Within that email, in addition to that personalized message that you include, it will also have a link to their um, fundraising toolkit and a link to their fundraising page. So they'll know exactly where to start. You know, GiveGab already um, includes that in that communication. So um, no need to add in that extra um, instruction step. You can just include a personal message. This is a great opportunity for you to share with your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers what your goals are for the day. Um, that way they can connect to the impact that they can make for you um, and they can kind of help shape their goals. So if I just sign up and you just say, hey, can you help me fundraise, I, I might not be as pushed as hard to fundraise as if you gave me $1,000 and then you told me exactly what this was going towards. So then I can, in turn, relay that message back to my supporters. So be very detailed in your ask and what your mission is for the day and what, your, what their impact would be to your overall goal. Awesome. That's a great point. Thanks, Vanessa. And then from there, you can see your fundraisers will be right you know, within that tab, um, so you can manage them right from your dashboard. You can either message them individually by clicking that little um, envelope icon next to their name, you know, if you want to motivate them or tell them that they're doing a great job, um, or if you want to message all of them to let them know you, know, you, met, you met a milestone in your goal, or um, you know, you're, you're so close, please help. Um, you can do that just by clicking that message all button. Um, and then you can also search through your fundraiser. So you, if, you, if you have a lot, um, it's very easy to use that search functionality to, um, to search through them and message them that way. And then there's also one um, little checkbox right, um, right below where your fundraisers will be listed. So you can um, opt in to allow fundraisers to fundraise you know, on their own. There's going to be a fundraise button. Um, right on your page, that anyone, if, they, you know, if they're inspired, if they're interested in your mission, they can just click that fundraise button and they will have a um, fundraising page created um, on their behalf. If you don't want that to happen, if you just kind of want to just limit fundraising to your board members, um, all you have to do is unclick that 
um, that checkbox right there. And this is what that page looks like. So as Vanessa said, it really ties in that branding um, and the uh, the story and the messaging that you include in your profile, and then they also have the opportunity to add in their own story. Um, again, why they're fundraising on their be on your behalf, why they're connected to your organization. They can include a photo, um, and then they can have their own goal as well. So, you know, if they want to raise five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, you know, they can include that so that their friends and family and their network knows exactly how much you know they're trying to raise. And if you notice, uh, you see the, the donate button in yellow there. It might be a little tiny on your screen. Um, but if you do have the allow fundraisers to sign up button enabled, which it is by default, um, it will a little box will appear right next to it that says fundraise. Thanks, Vanessa. And that, this is that toolkit. So as I was saying, the, the fundraising toolkit that all of your fundraisers will have um, includes a lot of resources that will really help them to you know, ask for money, to make sure to thank their donors, to customize their page. So it's kind of all of these prompts. They'll get little stickers to make it fun. Um, that ensures that they, they're stewarding their own donors, um, that they're reaching out socially, that they're um, creating their own goal. Um, so that kind of really helps them to go through all the steps necessary. And then their personal fundraising link is on the right side there. So they have their own personal link that they can share out with their network that it will go right to their page. Um, so anybody can make a donation right to them. And so this is what that Tell Your Story section will look like of the fundraising toolkit. So and they'll be able to add in their own story um, about why fundraising on your behalf, you can set their own goal, and change it at any time too. You know, if they um, wanted to raise it because they're getting a lot of donations, they absolutely can. Um, and then they can add their own photo. We also encourage uh, fundraisers to make a seed donation. You know, it's always great to kind of start off showing your passion uh, for an organization monetarily as well as through your story. So you know, we encourage um, fundraisers to make sure to, to make that seed donation and to show their network that you know, they are also donating on your behalf. So, um, so they're prompted to do so right in that toolkit. Please keep in mind um, the donation period for I'll Give Community is going to start at 6 p.m. on May 30th. So we don't want any donations made ahead of time. Um, so if they could make them right at 6 o'clock, then that would set the precedent for the day. Thanks, Vanessa. That's a good point. So these are just a couple other um, portions of the fundraising toolkit. Um, our reach out section integrates right with their email client. So if they're using Gmail or Yahoo, they can um, connect with their contacts right through the toolkit craft their own email with their own subject, and send it right out to all of, their, um, all of their network. So it's really easy for them to reach out to their contacts and you know, makes it easy to just ask for contributions on the day. This next section is about sharing socially. So all they have to do is click one of those um, Twitter or Facebook icons and a um, fundraising page will already be populated right on the, um, the Facebook or Twitter um, pop-up window, and then they can just um, write in their post there and post right to Facebook. So it's very easily integrated to make the process, again, as easy as possible for them to share out their page. Hi, Vanessa and Nicole. This is Dahlia. We have a question, if we could ta just take a minute. Um, a question from one of the attendees. They want to know what happens if someone gives a donation before May 30 or tries to give a donation before May 30. Um, no, that's a good question. Um, so as of right now, the system will not limit them. So if they do try to make the donation, then it, it will go through. Um, but the donation buttons on all the organization's profiles will not be turned on until 6 p.m. on May 30th. Um, so we, 
in working with uh, our team members at Forefront, um, we do want to try to keep the donations to the 24 hours of giving so that we really do have a good, clean snapshot of what we can accomplish in 24 hours. Um, so that, that's why we asked that for this uh, particular giving day. Thank you. Yeah. And the last section of that fundraising toolkit is the give thanks. So um, immediately after the donation is made, the donor will receive that automatic thank you right from your organization, the thank you message that you've crafted. Um, but in addition, we also ask fundraisers to steward their donors to thank their friends and family, um, either via email or you know, if they see them every day, just say, saying thank you. Um, that way that they, you know, they, they show their appreciation for, um, for on your behalf and also for themselves, for you know, their friends and family really um, caring about their, their connection to, to your organization. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to Vanessa. All right, so um, that is peer, peer, fun, peer fundraising in a nutshell. Again, um, I encourage everybody to go out to their nonprofit toolkits and check out our peer-to-peer -peer fundraising guide um, that will capture all of this information and probably some more um, to give you some inspiration as to how you can leverage those peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. Um, so what are your next steps? If you haven't signed up for All Give Community, please sign up. Um, the deadline is May, t May 10th, um, so we want to get everybody in there and uh, get you prepared for the day. Um, also, like and follow um, the I'll Give community on Facebook and Twitter. Um, watch for your inbox for important emails. Um, so we do have about an email once a week from um, the I'll Give community team, um, as well as I'm sure you'll get some other ones from the Forefront team. Um, but those will be more geared towards uh, the I'll Give community efforts and what are some of the, the key things you should be doing this week or looking ahead to do uh, in pre preparation for the day. Um, and then sign up for our upcoming webinars. Um, so we have a few more coming up. So if you go to the I'll Give website on the webinars uh, tab, you'll see those coming up. Um, and then uh, again, our peer-to-peer -peer fundraising uh, this, this webinar will be recorded and posted there. So if you'd like to re-listen to it again, it will be available for you, um, as well as all the other webinars. Uh, here it is again. I uh, can't stress enough. Uh, check out the Nonprofit Toolkit. Uh, this is your best friend uh, throughout your preparation efforts. Uh, a lot of good resources there. And then recruit your champions. So work with your I'll Give community team um, to figure out who those people could be. Um, as Nicole said, it could be just your board, um, or it could be as big as your volunteers, your board, staff member, and you can open up to anybody uh, who wants to sign up. So um, it's a really great resource, and we're so excited to see how you guys leverage your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers for this upcoming giving day. All right, with that, we can jump into questions. Well, there are no questions that are coming through yet. Um, so if folks uh, have any questions, please use the chat button. Um, I have a couple of questions, though. And one of them is around uh, how, what if someone is trying to set up a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser and something goes wrong? How can we make sure that they get the help that they need? Good question. Um, I would recommend that they reach out to our customer success team. Um, so that's that little blue chat bubble that follows you around the site. Um, we are on between um, 9 to 5 uh, Eastern Standard Time on the week on weekdays. Um, and then on weekends, uh, we periodically have people checking it, but um, for safe measure, we do say that we'll get back to them the next business day. So that's, the, that's what I would recommend doing first. Awesome. Um, and just to uh, confirm and clarify, the donate buttons won't be turned on until May 30, 6 p.m., correct? Correct, yes. Great. So that means that participating organizations need to be sure to activate their fundraisers as well as their donors 
you know, with the correct information. At 6 p.m. May 30, that's go time. Absolutely, yep. And then also on the algive.com uh, website, we will have leaderboards set up, so we will be tracking the most raise and the most donors, um, and those leaderboards start at 6 p.m. on May 30th as well. So, so we'll be tracking all that excitement. Um, in your uh, research, you know, one of the things you said was that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is a really good thing to try out with your board. Um, what if your board is just a little bit, eh, I don't know, this seems hard. What are some of the best ways that organizations can uh, persuade their boards to get involved in this way? Yeah, um, I would say before you, if your board is that, of that mindset, then I would say prepare a strategy before you go in there. Um, so again, having a clear ask. Um, so if you, if you say, hey, can you, can you fundraise on our behalf, um, that is leaving it very open. But if you said, hey, hey there's five of you, and if each one of you raises um, $1,000, you know, that's $5,000 right there. Here are, here's the nonprofit, or here's our nonprofit toolkit that we're following, which has a lot of ideas for um, social media. And then here's also the peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising toolkit, um, which has pre-assembled pre um, Twitter fa and Facebook messages. We have pre-written emails they can leverage. Um, so if you present it that way, um, really spell it out for them and what their resources are, um, it, it can make it really easy and less overwhelming. Um, also, if they really want to be minimalistic about it, if you sign them up, um, as Nicole showed us, how you walk through that in your, your profile page, um, they will get emailed a link to their peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page, and they can just simply take that link and start sharing it. They don't necessarily have to create a story or add a picture or anything. We will certainly encourage them to, because the more robust their profile is, the better donors will be able to connect to it. But, um, but they can even just share that link through social media and, and their network. So um, that could be the, the least that they could do for you. We just had a question come in. Does peer-to-peer -peer work even if you have a really small budget available for promotions? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the best thing to leverage when you have a small budget because those individuals are, you know, are your voice. They're pr promoting for you. So, you know, if you know people who have a lot of followers on Facebook or Twitter or, you know, people who um, utilize email contact or, you know, just, just have a, a passion for your organization and are not afraid to um, share it with everyone. Utilizing those people and, and engaging them as fundraisers is the best way to promote your message and your um, mission. Because again, they're going to be your voice for you. I want to just jump, on, just jump on top of that comment. Your peers or your friends, they're not only your voice, they are your really affordable marketing tool. Um, because as word of mouth spreads and as folks have kind of dug into um, strategic communications and how mobilization happens, when people see their friends are giving to organizations and are asked and they're leveraging their own social networks to make an ask like this, those friends are then more likely to respond and then as they kind of cave into the peer pressure, they push the message out as well. The key is making the story of why someone is fundraising on behalf of your organization um, so compelling. And so even though board members or others have the option to kind of go bare bones with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, to get the most out of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, we really do encourage people to try and share those compelling stories of why this mission matters to them. Um, I used to volunteer for a really small reproductive justice organization. I mean, we were tiny and scrappy. And our annual peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising was literally our small board getting out there and telling all of our friends and family about why this organization was important. Um, I was able to raise, you know, like over $1,500. Um, just as one board member, multiply that by eight, 
and we had a pretty good year end uh, for us. So peer-to-peer -peer works, just a little bit of elbow grease at the front end can really make it uh, really uh, beneficial to you. Are there other questions? Hearing none, um, feel free to send questions along to uh, me, D. Coleman, at myforefront.org, or just head on over to I'll Give Community um, and uh, that little blue chat button. The customer care folks are stupendous, and they will answer any and all of your questions. Um, thanks so much for joining in. Thank you, GiveGab, for co-presenting with us. And uh, a recording of this will be posted as soon as possible. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Bye.